All right, so this is the January 25th, 2022 Board of Water Works Trustees meeting. Um, first on our agenda today, we have a consent agenda, which uh, consists of minutes from the December 21st, 2021 Board of Water Works Trustees minute, uh, meeting, the minutes from the January 4th, 2022 Board of Water Works Trustees meeting, Minutes for the January 11th, 2022 Board of Water Works Trustees meeting and the minutes for the January 18th, 2022 Board of Water Works Trustees meeting, because obviously we've been meeting a lot. Um, then we have financial statements, list of payments for December 2021, summary of CEO approved expenditures in excess of $20,000, uh, review and approve reserve funds investments policy, review and approve depositories for Des Moines Water Works funds, and the establishment of the next meeting date for February 22nd, 2022. Is there a motion to move the consent agenda? So moved. And a second? Second. And Ted, looks like there's a couple of different things on here, or do you have anything else do you want to explain? No, Graham, each year we bring the reserve fund investment policy and the um, list of approved depositories to the board for uh, review and approval. Um, typically the policy doesn't change significantly and the depositories also don't change significantly. Um, I don't have anything that I wanna highlight there, but I'll ask Amy if there's anything in there that you'd like to highlight before the board approves them. I think that's fair, Ted. The only thing I would highlight is that uh, the um, level of deposits was increased from the prior year um, to $25 million. And that's simply um, a factor of uh, investment yields are still very low. And our investment advisors are um, encouraging us to keep more cash in the money market as opposed to tying it up in low yield uh, investments. And so uh, I raised those, but I do wanna emphasize that all public funds are collateralized by the bank. And so um, despite that increase, public funds are not at risk. All right, any uh, questions or comments on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? We're not able to hear you. Yes. There we go. And months. Yes. Thank you. Great. So that brings us uh, to point in our meeting where we allow for public comment. If there's anyone here who would like to address the board, now would be a great time. Michelle, do we have anyone waiting either online or in person? I do not have anyone here with me in the boardroom, and I don't see any hands raised online either. All right. Let me know if that changes. We'll do. Um, we will move on to, action, uh, to our action items, starting with 3A. And I have these not quite in order on my computer here, but I'll try to do it. Uh, 3A Drop is out the... Because, um, I'm sorry? Okay. 3A is to award Norwalk Highway G14 meter volt. Um, this is a public hearing. So I will open the, the uh, public hearing for this item and uh, see if there are any comments from the public regarding the form of contract plans and specifications and estimated costs. Is, are there any comments here or Ted, have we received any comments? Graham, we have received no comments. All right, with that, I will close the public, uh, or close the public hearing portion of this item and um, ask to, to ensure that there has been a finding that no facility of the kind uh, to be constructed is available for rent or sharing from another agency. Is that correct, Ted? Graham, that's correct. And there's a certification to that effect from Mike McKernan uh, in the board packet. Excellent. Uh, so that will be in writing. Um, and so now I'm seeking a motion for adoption of form of contract plans and specifications and estimated cost. Is there, is there a motion to that effect? Again, I'm seeking- so moved. Thank you. 
Is there a second to the motion? Second. We've got a motion to second. Any comments or questions on this motion? With that, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. All right. And with that, uh, Ted, I'll turn it over to you for an analysis of the bids received. Graham, this is a, a project to construct a meter vault in association with some transmission line that was uh, constructed earlier to serve the city of Norwalk. Um, a new uh, transmission line. It's not a new connection, but a new transmission line um, that extended off of the end of the uh, City of Cumming Norwalk joint project. Um, we had a number of prospective bidders uh, take plans out for this project. The low bid was submitted by the Rognus Corporation um, in the amount of 536,000. Um, Rognus has completed projects for Des Moines Waterworks in the past, and we would recommend that board award the project to Rognus. Great. So I'm looking for a motion to award the Norwalk Highway G14 meter vault contract to Rognus Corporation in the amount of $536,000 and authorize the chairperson, CEO, and general manager to execute the contract. Is there a motion to that effect? Moved. Motion and a second? Second. second. Any comments or questions on item 3A? Graham, I had a question on this one after seeing in the news all the development going on in Norwalk. Um, about a year and a half ago, we had extensive conversation about their water needs. Um, I'm just curious if they have approached us at all and if, um, you know, some of the development that we put in place as far, far as getting water to them was part of that development. Because I remember us talking about um, the deep air extension and development, but, but uh, not, what, not what we heard on the news last night or read in the paper. Sue, great question. Um, we did have a, quite a bit of conversation with the city of Norwalk and the city of Cumming, as you will recall, about um, development that was in, uh, going to occur along that corridor, along the highway there between Norwalk and Cumming. And this connection, this, this new connection that came essentially all the way from the Maffet treatment plant or the McMullen treatment plant through a new pumping station that was jointly funded by Norwalk, Cumming, and West Des Moines, uh, is specifically intended to provide a second connection to Norwalk and support development in both the cities of Norwalk and Cumming. Um, after that joint project, Norwalk then extended additional transmission main from um, about the Cumming city limits into the city of Norwalk to provide even more capacity. And this meter pit is the last phase of that project. So this is all part of those ongoing discussions, all part of um, the expansion of capacity for Norwalk and coming and um, in addition to uh, redundant feed for the city of Norwalk. So all to support their, their growth. Sue, thanks for asking that question. Um, I remember that too. Um, anybody else have a comment or question on this item? Hearing none, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. All right. Uh, moving on to item 3B. 3B is the award the Fluor Drive Operation Center Stormwater Systems Improvement Phase 2 contract. This is also a public hearing. Um, and so I will open the public hearing on item 3B and see if there are, uh, and ask for any comments from the public regarding the form of contract plans and specifications and estimated cost. Is there anyone here to speak on this item or Ted, have we received any comments? Graham, we haven't received any comments. All right. So with that, I will close the public hearing and seek a motion for the adoption of the form of contract plans and specifications and estimated costs. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. All right. Um, unless there are any comments or questions, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. 
Ashburn? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. All right. So, Ted, how about an analysis, analysis of the bids received? Absolutely, Graham. Um, I want to make the board aware that this is a, uh, an interesting project intended to solve um, what I would refer to as internal flooding at the fluor drive treatment plant um, during uh, flood conditions. When we have to isolate the treatment plant, the stormwater system, we literally shut it off so that the river as it rises will not back up into our facilities. And then once we're isolated, the only way to get stormwater out of the plant is through this pumping station that we're working on. And we've experienced a number of times that if it, if it rains hard, uh, when we have the stormwater system locked down, we can get uh, rising water and even some cases um, fairly significant flooding inside the plant. And so uh, we raised this or increased the size of some piping in the plant to help with the problem back in 2016. And now we're actually building a bigger stormwater pump station to, in an attempt to keep water out of our buildings and out of um, our facilities down at the plant when we're, we're isolated. Uh, here again, we we see, uh, had a number of uh, contractors take plans out for this project. We did receive four bids uh, for the project. As you can see there, unfortunately, we were unable to open one of the bids because of an irregularity in the bid bond. So the bid was submitted, it was on time, but because the bond wasn't correct, uh, we did not open that bid. So we opened three bids. The low bid, as you can see there, was um, 1.17, about 1.18 million compared to a, an engineer's estimate of 1.11 million. Um, good responsive bids here. The low bid was received from WRH Incorporated and WRH has not completed work for Des Moines Waterworks in the past, but we did do some reference checking, talked to Veenster and Kim, a local engineering consulting firm that does a lot of a design and construction of this kind of work. And they are currently working with uh, WRH Incorporated on a number of projects and are satisfied with the, the performance and um, shared with us that uh, they've had good luck with this contractor. And so staff would recommend that the board award the contract to WRH Incorporated. Excellent. So I am looking for a motion to award the Fluor Drive Operations Center Stormwater Systems Improvement Phase Two contract to WRH Incorporated in the amount of one million one hundred seventy-nine thousand nine hundred dollars, and authorize the chairperson and the CEO and general manager to execute the contract. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions on Item Three B? All right, hearing none, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburn? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. All right, uh, moving rapidly along. Item 3C is the easement for water main, uh, easement for water main in City of Des Moines Observatory Road Reconstruction Project. Um, Ted, I'll have you explain this before I get a motion. Graham, this is pretty straightforward. It's a small easement that we need from the city of Des Moines to relocate a hydrant because of a paving project that the city of Des Moines is doing. And they're more than happy to give us easement on their property for the work. They, in fact, have already approved this easement, granting us the space to do our work. And we just need to um, ratify that as a board, um, ratify the conditions of that easement. Um, staff and legal have reviewed those conditions, the terms and conditions of the easement and are in agreement with those. And we simply ask that, uh, uh, that the board um, approve this easement. Excellent. So I'm looking for a motion to authorize the chairperson to execute the document, uh, permanent easement for water main right of way granting an easement to the Des Moines Water Works for a water main in the city of Des Moines Observatory Road reconstruction project. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. 
in a second. Okay, um, are there any comments or questions on this item? Hearing none, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Sorry. Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. Great. So if it's acceptable to everybody, I'm going to um, kind of skip over item D and cover our information items so that we can do that now. And then I'll come back to item uh, item D. That way, if we do go into the closed session, when we come out of the closed session, we will have no business to conduct, if that is acceptable to all involved. Um, now, with that being said, I'm not sure there are any reports to be heard from the Planning and Finance and Audit Committee. Is that correct? That's correct, Graham. We did uh, use that time for special board meetings to discuss the Regional 28E. Great. And so there were no Planning or Finance and Audit meetings this month. Um, I will say uh, for the Bill Stowe Memorial Committee, there has been uh, a lot of there have been a lot of meetings recently to kind of um, move this thing forward. And as we have discussed in the fact in the past, nothing happens until this board is uh, uh, informed of what those ideas are and, and decisions are uh, are left to this board. But um, I'm feeling real optimistic about some really um, exciting ideas that may come out of the Bill Stowe Memorial Committee for this board to consider uh, probably in the first part of this year. So that's exciting. Um, the Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden, I don't have much to report there, except that uh, you may have heard that the former CEO of Des Moines Botanical Garden, Stephanie Judela, was just chosen to be the executive director of the Toronto Botanical Garden. Oh, uh, so that, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting project. It's a currently a four acre botanical garden with a expansion plan to go to 35 acres. So um, it'll be an exciting project for her. Um, with that, um, Des Moines Waterworks Park Foundation. Um, I don't know, Andrea, Joel, if you have anything to report from there. Um, I don't, I think the only thing that's probably significant to report on, I don't know if you want to um, comment on this at all, is just uh, the discussions that have been going on between uh, the utility and the Park Foundation trying to stay on top of the um, uh, outstanding debt when it comes to the, the Ruan connector. Um, and just wanted to share with this board that um, we have been having conversations with the Park Foundation staff um, and uh, to, to have a better understanding of what their plan is and some timelines for um, closing that gap of, on funding. And the goal is to um, accomplish that by the end of, 20, of this year, 2022. Um, and so I will do a, um, a better job of ensuring that I'm keeping you guys updated on um, meaningful um, updates when it comes to uh, how things are progressing with, with that finance, financing. I don't know if there's anything else, Joel, you have to add about other items within the Park Foundation or Graham, if you want to comment any more on um, the, the gap financing or outstanding debt, I should call it. I would, little, very little to add, Andrea, very well said. Um, there's also a little discussion of the kind of the future of the pedestrian bridge over the Raccoon River and um, the uh, multiple parties involved there, including Waterworks and the city. And that's a nice segue, Joel. The only thing I'll add to that is there is a lot of interest in that bridge and rightfully so. And I think excitement about doing something there. Uh, the city is interested in that. Obviously, bikers and others are interested in that. Um, the, the thing I'll add to Andrea's comments is as the Park Foundation um, executes its plan to pay down the debt, um, they're not pursuing any new large projects in the park, uh, including that bridge, but um, they understand what, what their task is for 2022. And I, I'm, 
uh, we had a productive meeting with with Sam Carroll this week about that, and so I appreciate you bringing it up, Andrea. Any okay? Anything else about the Park Foundation? With that, I'll go with some trepidation to external affairs. I say trepidation because you never know what's going on at the legislature. Again. Well, thank you for <laughs> clarifying why you had trepidation. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yes, so that's my first item today. Thank you, Graham. Um, the Iowa State Legislature gaveled in a couple of weeks ago. So uh, advocacy strategies and our team have already been busy reviewing bills and amendments um, having to do with several topics, uh, including COVID mask mandates, uh, laws that allow police officers to report and cite drivers for failing to move over for stopped emergency vehicles. Um, that's sponsored by the Office of Public Safety and could affect utility vehicles. Uh, cybersecurity defenses, and then we were asked to provide data and information on water quality challenges to the Senate Agriculture Committee members in advance of a hearing yesterday. We did not present at the hearing, but um, some of the legislators who had been here on a tour asked us for some data, which was great. Um, <clears throat> Couple of other topics under the heading of collaboration. There's a lot going on right now and I'm seeing some of you in meetings. And so some of the things that you are alluding to earlier were things that I'm working on. So, and they're amazing and fun topics. But um, one of the things that I think you may have seen, uh, Ted and I had met with Kim Perez, the executive director of the Botanical Garden a few months ago to discuss uh, ways of recognizing the support. And there's my magical picture from Michelle Watson. Um, we are discussing ways that the garden can recognize the support that Waterworks has provided to the garden over the years. So last week we received word that the sign we agreed upon had been installed. So uh, Kim says, if you'd like to brave the cold, you can certainly view it. The sign is installed within a cement pillar. You can see there overlooking the Des Moines River. It looks like it's been there forever. Uh, I, I won't speak for anyone else. I was really pleased with the appearance of it. I think Ted was too. Um, just in pieces, the, the part, uh, in part, the sign states, we wouldn't be who we are today without them. Waterworks. In the same way they have ensured our longevity, we support their ongoing efforts to protect our waterways, including the Des Moines River. And then let's think downstream together and ensure our actions protect our natural resources for safe water and uh, resilient rivers and vibrant communities. So it's pretty cool. Um, we're making plans to have a small event to christen the sign. We don't have any details about that yet, but we would hope uh, to invite board members of both the Botanical Garden and Waterworks, as well as some community officials this spring. So that'll be cool to bring extra attention to it. And then it'll be right there in public on, a, on the terrace where they have lots of events and, and um, receptions along the bike trail there. So that's pretty cool. Um, Two other topics. So uh, you'll be seeing a press release tomorrow uh, on Thursday by the Department, Iowa Department of Agriculture. And we will have one as well coming from Waterworks involving a joint purchase of a cover crop seeder. It's taken over a year. Oh yes, another magical picture. Thank you, Michelle. Um, that's what it looks like. It's um, a cover crop seeder that I believe is produced by Hagee Manufacturing and sold by John Deere. And it's taken about a year to pull all of the pieces together, but um, uh, I think probably we're all aware that cover crops are listed as one of the conservation practices that help keep soil in place and keep uh, the soil and farm chemicals from running into rivers and tributar tributaries. And so um, we've been working with our partners, Polk County and the city of Des Moines and the Iowa Department of Ag to purchase this cover crop seeder. So Polk County is the fiscal agent and they will be contracting with Heartland Farmers Cooperative in the coming three or four years, maybe three years. Um, the idea is to work in our watershed, starting in the Beaver Creek and hopefully in the North Raccoon to uh, aggressively market and build relationships with farmers so that we can show um, a possible business model that could be scaled up across the state and across the region for um, faster adoption of cover crops. So that's pretty cool. I got to write in that, it was fun. Um, so that will be announced to the public tomorrow. And then we hope to have a VIP event this summer. I just got an email about it. So we'll have a small event. So we'll again, invite some boards, elected officials, uh, some legislators that wanna see it this coming summer, somewhere here around the Metro. And then that'll be hitting the fields next fall. If I go to that event, will I get to drive it? Absolutely, okay, no, probably you. not. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, Jen, I, I just like to offer one comment on this about our strategy here, which is trying to partner with a trusted ag retailer to 
facilitate the implementation of a practice that we know will provide benefit, but has been slow uh, in, in terms of uptake. And we think that uh, working with the partners that we have on board, focusing in our watershed and getting a, a trusted ag retailer to try to build this as a business model is a creative strategy that's worked in other states. And we're really pleased that uh, all of the other partners stepped to the table and, and uh, shouldered the, the, the major burden here to get this piece of equipment on the ground. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fun. It's new. Um, yeah, the last thing I guess I'll talk about is um, you probably heard on the news that the governor was announcing that she that the state will be dispersing $100 million in American Rescue Plan Act money and um, 25 million of that is going to the Iowa Department of Agriculture and the governor's staff encouraged us to put together a proposal with some of our partners in this space to um, apply for some of that money. So I've had multiple meetings with lots of partners and we're pulling them all together. Um, there's two that we've identified and pitched to the Department of Ag um, that for a proposal to see if they were even interested in biting on those. One is uh, connecting landowners who uh, drink from our water supply in our central Iowa region and farm up in the watersheds, so non-operator landowners. Um, there's a project that we think uh, would be fun to undertake with uh, Practical Farmers of Iowa, People's Land Management Company, maybe some farmers cooperatives. The other one is a pretty big one that we're trying to pull together, and this one involves wetlands. And so the Department of Ag and my boss, Ted Corrigan, really love wetlands, and so I'm trying to intersect all those things. Um, did I use intersect correctly? Anyway, so we're trying to involve them in a large scale wetland effort. So we met with the Department of Ag and an engineering firm at Polk County and uh, Polk County Conservation, Icon Water Trail. So we're trying to figure out this like large wetland proposal that a bunch of partners could put together. So that would be pretty cool. It would um, take unproductive pieces of farm ground out of production that maybe are in a floodplain and then put them to good use as a wetland. Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation too um, was in some of those meetings, I believe. So there's a really interesting mix of partners there. So uh, I think we may be able to pull a proposal together. It'll be a multi-year one and a large one, but that's been fun to work on as well. And I can keep you posted on that. That's it, Graham. And I would be happy to answer questions if I can that people have. Jen, thank you. Any questions or comments for Jen? Nice work. And I, I will like to drive that when the opportunity comes. Um, Ted, um, your updates, including 2022 strategic initiatives. Yeah, Graham, and I think I'll focus on the strategic initiatives for, for my updates today. Um, every year for the past number of years in the month of January, we've brought to the board um, a series of utility goals and um, initiatives that we felt were important for the utility to complete in each year, uh, things we wanted to keep the board updated on a regular basis. Well, with the benefit of a, of a newly minted strategic plan this year, instead of um, identifying uh, separate utility goals, we've uh, made the decision um, to uh, focus on the 2022 strategic initiatives in, identified in, in the strategic plan. Uh, we have a number of initiatives that you can see there um, related from things including onboarding, diversity and inclusion, succession planning, customer engagement, uh, capital improvement planning, facility O&M, there are a number of strategic initiatives, there are a number of uh, tactics we intend to use. And then we've also, uh, for each of those uh, KPIs, we've, we, or for each of those, we've developed uh, KPIs or key performance indicators that we intend to try to accomplish throughout the year. And so instead of the historical um, utility goal spreadsheet that we see on a quarterly basis, the board will this year see this matrix of our strategic initiatives, and we will report out on our progress on each of those on an ongoing basis. Uh, now, this being January, we don't, we don't have a lot to report yet. Um, some of these things are, are just getting underway, but as the year goes on, we will have uh, regular updates for the board on each of these um, important initiatives that were the result of our strategic plan. So um, you can stay tuned, look forward to that. Uh, but I, I think I'll, I'll leave it there, Graham, for today, as I know we have other business to attend. Great. Any comments or questions for Ted? I have a quick question for Ted on the strategic initiatives. Sure. Um, and I don't know if I'm getting those mixed up with your personal goals, but is this a lot more than we usually have? 
for strategic this is, initiatives? This is certainly more, historically, we tried to focus on three um, specific utility goals. We always brought the board three, and then we had a safety initiative, which was right. the fourth. This is, this is certainly a longer list than that, but this is a list of uh, initiatives that were identified in the five-year strategic plan. Sure. And I do think it's important to know that while we'll be working on many of these initiatives this year, it is not our intention, nor is it likely possible for us to complete all of these initiatives. So a little bit of a different flavor this year. Um, of course, historically, we've always had more than the three initiatives we were working on. We just brought what we consider to be three of the most important. Um, so yes, this is different. It is a longer list. Um, it isn't necessarily things that will all be accomplished, but things we will be working on and want to keep the board up to date on. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else for Ted? All right, I will... Uh... At the, at the bottom of the agenda, you'll see forthcoming meetings, and I'll address the, the February 1st and February 8th committee meetings here when I go uh, into my talk about our closed session, but those give you a time for when the board will be meeting over the next couple of months. At this point, we intend to keep the virtual and boardroom option, the mostly virtual option, as long as uh, COVID continues to spike in Iowa. So this moves us back to item 3D, and this is the Regional 28E review. And for those who are listening in and attending today's meeting, here's kind of an update of where we are. The board has met um, every week uh, since the, for the first of the year um, to go over uh, the 28E document. And I have to say, I am, very appreciative of my colleagues and the staff at uh, Des Moines Waterworks. This is a complicated process. And so we've met three times. We intend to meet again today. We intend to, to take a portion of the February 1st meeting and a portion of the February 8th meeting, meeting to continue to review the 28E. Um, if you're asking why, um, it's a complicated document. I don't know the exact number of pages, it's 70 plus pages of, um, of legal ease, if you will, but it's very important um, that we go through this document section by section. The difficult task, I think, uh, that we all are well aware of is um, trying to anticipate the future. Have we addressed uh, future problems and how they'll be addressed by a regional board? Have we um, met the expectations of our potential partners. Um, and so what seems like uh, you know, something that could be a short discussion on a, a single page ends up taking most of our, uh, our meeting. And so admittedly, I think it's taken us a little bit longer to go through uh, the 28E than anticipated, but I, haven't, I don't have real heartburn about that because I, as I say, I appreciate the, the thoughtful way the board and staff have approached this. And um, we haven't, I don't think we've, I think it's fair to say we haven't hit any snags uh, at all. It's just a, a process to go through the document. And so, um, as I say, we're gonna go through it today. Uh, we plan to go through it again on the first and the eighth. It's still our intent that we will make the, the document public, um, you know, to our potential partners and others as soon as possible, hopefully in the, the early part of February. But the most important thing is that we do this right. Um, and so that's kind of our process to date and our plan for the future. Ted or my fellow board members, is there anything I've left out there before I seek a motion? Um, I think you covered it quite well. Okay. Um, any? Is there any question anybody has that's that may be attending the meeting that, that wants to understand the process. It's very important. And the one thing I, I left out is at the, the February 1st meeting, we will discuss a communications plan for regionalization. And the, the purpose of that is to, to make sure that we're doing um, one of the most critical parts of this process. And that is communi communicating with the people we serve and in the, the rest of the region. And so 
that February 1st meeting, we're going to discuss communications of this uh, of this plan and how that how we're going to roll that out over the next you know over the forthcoming months. All right, um, not hearing or seeing any questions. Um, I'm going to seek a motion to go into a closed session, and I'll read the reasons why uh, we're citing this closed session. And also, I'll remind everyone that uh, our intent is to meet here for about an hour or so. Today, uh, we'll come back into public session after this closed session, but we don't intend to take any action today. Um, we don't intend to take any action next week, for that matter, uh, on the um, uh, on the, the 28E, but uh, as I say, we, we will keep people posted. So the motion I'm seeking to go into a closed section uh, is based on Iowa code section 388.91 to discuss marketing and pricing strategies and proprietary information that may impact its competitive, uh, Des Moines Waterworks competitive position by public disclosure, disclosure not required of potential or actual competitors related to ongoing negotiations over creating an integrated regional water authority. Each of the topics should be discussed in closed session to avoid disclosure likely to prejudice or disadvantage the position of Des Moines Waterworks. Secondly, Iowa Code Section 622.10 to request and receive legal advice from retained legal counsel and to avoid waiver of the attorney client privilege. Uh, thirdly, Iowa Code Section 22.765 to review a tentative and preliminary draft prior to completion of the 28E agreement. And uh, fourth, Iowa Code Section 21.51A to discuss or review records which are required or authorized by state or federal law to be kept confidential. So for those four reasons, I'm seeking a motion uh, to go into closed session. Is there a motion? I'll move. I have a motion and do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any comments, questions, thoughts before we go into our closed session? Or we take a vote to go into our closed session. All right, with that, I'll ask Michelle to take a, or to record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. All right, so we will exit out of this meeting and go into our closed session meeting room, and then we'll be back and repeat for the third or fourth time. But when we come back, we don't expect to take any action. So if uh, you don't mind signing out here, I'll see uh, board and staff in the other room. Recording in Joel, it's pretty hard to be upset, isn't it? When you look at that darling little face though, no matter what no time doubt. it is. No doubt, 3 a.m., he's still cute. <laughs> 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 all right we've got it every... gets easier joel it, gets it does easier. till they're teenagers yeah i don't know he doesn't talk back yet so that seems it seems easy now it gets easier yeah. then it gets worse again then it gets really easy yeah <laughs> <Good. laughs> then you just worry then you just worry about it yeah yeah, yeah. So. All right, enough of that. So we've come out, it is Jan January 25th, 2022. Uh, we've had our closed meeting. We have no action to take. We meet again a week from today. Um, any other business folks? Hearing none, stay warm. This meeting is adjourned. Thanks, guys. Thank